So thanks for joining me on part three of this series with Jeremy Kessler from Steel Breeze Accounting and Tax. And today we're going to cover what we can do about planning for our future taxation. It's uh, likely going to be a hugely burdensome cost to most people, certainly successful business owners, families. And so hopefully this, this episode will cover a bunch of thoughts and ideas for you to consider as you're thinking about future taxation and how to mitigate that as much as possible. Enjoy. Kind of shoots and gears now, think about this year, think about future years. And we touched on some of the key areas. Obviously, we're trying to plan ahead. There's so many unknowns around uh, what tax rates will be. You know, we feel like uh, some people believe we're on the, the cusp of World War III. And who knows? We don't know. But as we're thinking about future taxation, there's some things that are already known. And we're not sure what's you know, how they're going to react to it is that take the Trump tax sort of uh, law sunsetting in the end of 2025, right? Beginning yeah. of 2026. So, Jeremy, can you talk high level, like some of the key things that that may impact if they do nothing with it, if they just let it sunset? Uh, well, what specifically? There's so much involved in that. I mean, <laughs> you know. well, think about so, so do, do the basics, right? Because, right, so the for, for starters, right, the tax brackets will change. Yeah. Like what's that? What's that look like? So, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, he changed C corps. He changed. Um, he changed different brackets, but it's like they're they're constantly changing anyway. And it's like they're always introducing these credits. It's it's very you know unpredictable knowing what's going to happen, whether or not they extend this. Depends who's going to be in office. You know, whether it's Democrat or Republican and. All those things impact whether or not some of these tax savings or, you know, from these acts are going to continue or sunset. Yeah. Yeah. But based on kind of what you know today and say they just sunset, what happens to the tax brackets? Well, they're going to increase undoubtedly. Right. Um, back to back to the way they were before Trump enacted it. Yeah. Right. So everyone's tax rates will go up and it's not it's not like they're going to change the, the income amounts or thresholds that represent it. So our tax rates will go up. Yes. If nothing is done with it. So that's almost so just use that as a base case if they do nothing. And to your point, there's so many unknowns to it. But one option is that they just let it expire. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And tax rates go up and um, people are already facing you know, headwinds with inflation, all this stuff. Who knows what that looks like two years down the road? I believe it's still going to be hanging around. You're going to have a higher tax rate, right? T pay more taxes, especially if you make more money. So that's, that's to me, one of the very simplistic things to think about. Okay, if that happens, like what could what you, you do, do in, the, <laughs> in the next couple of years to get ahead of that? Yeah. Right? And, and what that can mean down, even down the load. And I think one of the things you mentioned kind of at the beginning of our, our, our discussion on tax strategies for this year is like thinking about like getting them into tax-free vehicles like a Roth. Yeah. Right. Because if you, you, you try to do that now, I pay taxes now. If, I, if tax rates are going up, that's the time to do it. Let's convert more. Let's put more into Roth where we can and try to figure out ways to get them sheltered because – if we, we lead to higher taxes, then let's shield it, right? At least the portions of it, right? So that's that's something to consider, right? It's funny, you say, you, you know, what can people do? And I think that what we've talked about this whole episode is what you could do. You can get ahead of it. You can stop procrastinating. You can, you know, get connected with a professional, you know, tax advisor that can analyze if, if you're a business owner, whether or not you're in the right tax structure. Because if you set all these things up, that's what you can do. And it that actually doesn't matter if taxes go up or down or whatever. If you're in, in the right things, then you're already ahead of the game. That's, that's all I can say is that, you know, yeah. I wouldn't worry about what are, what's going to happen in the future. It's just making sure that you have money in Roth, you have money in, you know, 401k and, and you're, you know, it's, it's like when you're investing, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. You know, right. Earth. Yeah, and that's it. And I think a lot of folks, and I see it through, uh, you know, our mutual contact, Brian, who deals a lot of stuff with retirement income planning. I mean, he deals with a lot of folks who are very close to retiring 
and um, have a massive a level of success. And the biggest fear they have is now actually using their money because now they have to pay taxes on it, right? And they're worried they're going to tax rates go sky high. Like they're going to have to take this money and the government's going to require it at yep. a certain age. So these are all real life things that, again, they could change, like you said, but staying where they are, you're saying it puts people in a bind, right? It adds more stress because they have fewer options. So knowing that it's a possibility tax rates will go up, right? Putting stuff in Roth, doing con some conversions strategically, right? To, um, you know, looking at current tax uh, rates and trying not to get too high up on that, on the band there and start putting into the other vehicles like that are going to be tax advantaged. Like life insurance is another great storage vehicle that is tax deferred, right? And can be tax free if done properly. And, you know, thinking of those sort of angles to even business and real estate could be tax advantaged. So these are all areas to explore, right? How can I get it out of the way, at least for portions of my assets, right? Um, so it's just something to consider. Um, one, of the, one of the things we haven't even talked about with you know retirement options is that you know the difference between Roth and and you know an IRA everyone kind of knows that but like one of the things that people don't consider is the fact that you have to take RMDs in a traditional IRA and that can be detrimental to your portfolio because what happens is is that RMD is calculated at the end of the year for the next year. And if your portfolio is kicking butt in December, that's when the RMD is calculated. And all of a sudden it tanks mm -hmm. in January, February, March, April. You take your RMD in May based on the value of the last year. You're screwed. And then on top of that, to your point, taxes go up. You know, that's why you have to get into di getting into different vehicles like life insurance or, or Roth or there's many options, but you, you have to diversify. That's I think that's the biggest takeaway. Yeah, no, it's it's huge. And and to your point, and and, and have different options, and it will give you hopefully uh, less stress because you're prepared for it, right? Yeah, for things to go awry, because that's what we do know is that even if today's great, tomorrow could be bad, or vice versa, right? Nothing stays the same, and. And to that point, that's a really massively important point. Anyone who's thinking about retirement, too, in this, this vein, and we won't go deep into it, but having something to buffer the volatility, that's what we always talk about around yeah. this stuff. It's exactly what you talked about is when things go haywire, and we know the market, if that's where you're primarily focused, will go haywire on occasion, right? It will go up and down. But how are you prepared when it goes down? Do you have alternative ways to combat it? Right. In that situation, the way you described, you're kind of stuck because it's required. Right. Required is not optional. And so this is why having fewer dollars in there could be benefit, because if you have them in Roth or other tax free things, you can pull from them more and still be able to maintain your lifestyle. That's always a challenge. So these are all kind of buffer assets that we want to build in to diversify so you can kind of have the kind of like shock absorb shock absorbers to your car. Right, right. Right. When things hit, I got stabilizers. I can draw from my Roth. I can draw from municipal bonds or life insurance, wherever. So just another important point to think about in your future diversification. What does that actually mean? Um, hugely important. Um, so, you know, getting back to the Trump laws too, and I know another big thing in, in, you hear enough about this this idea of kind of the the next wave of baby boomers retiring and leaving um, uh, the workforce. They've you know a lot of them who've maybe benefited from this massive surge of debt and liquidity thrown into the markets over the last ten years have a lot of assets, and you know they're eventually going to pass too, right? The big so there's a big push to think about too the state taxes because. Yeah. You know, this is going to become a big windfall for the government uh, as a lower. It's going to actually come back to state tax exemption, which, again, fluctuates quite a bit or can. Right. But it's going to come down, you know, based on 2026. Right. That's a big, that um, is a big one. Yeah. That, and, and that's one that um, how do you get ahead of that? Right. Because 
you know, there's certain gifting laws and how much you can exclude from your estate, but you have to get ahead of it and plan for it. Like, so can you talk about just kind of high level your thoughts around that and maybe what, what maybe people can start doing? I think just a lot of it is just getting a, a at least a general will in place. I mean, I've seen so many people that don't have that and then it goes to probate and that's just a whole headache. But there's, other, you know, there's other things like you speak to an estate attorney. And that's what you and I have been trying to do is kind of make sure that, you know, you have kind of like a family office to to go to, you know, if you need an estate attorney, like Tom has one to recommend, you know, and it's like having all those people, your accountant, your wealth manager and your legal team all speaking with each other is very important because if they're all working in silos, they don't know what the other is doing and and your plan isn't going to be as good as it could be. You're spot on. I, I, I think it's just, I've just learned myself. I mean, you know, you have your expertise, I have mine, and others have theirs. And in isolation, they're not as powerful as opposed to when they're combined together to help really care for the clients and try to give them the best solutions. I just think it's suboptimal when you try to piecemeal it, and you because know, you just don't know what you don't know in some cases. And um, so I, I t- tremendously echo that. Echo that for. For anyone listening, that like, you know, whether you have your set of advisors, get them right. Get your players in place because, and let them work together. Uh, how often do advisors not talk to each other? I think it's more frequent than not. <laughs> like they're just not talking to each other. Yeah, um, yeah. We stay in our bubbles, and I think that is a disservice for clients. Uh, but to your point, it's it's really complicated, right? There's a lot of laws. There's a lot of nuances to it, um, moving parts, and you know, to expect uh, um, someone who's a uh, in their job or their business to be able to handle it is probably impossible, right? It's just too many things to understand. Yeah. And these state taxes are a big thing. I mean, I know one for, for folks who are today, they could be, you know, half their wealth could be gone if they just passed, right? And we don't know when that can happen. And it says, you know, that's, a, you know, the death tax, whether you agree with it or not. I mean, to me, I, I just think it's unfair for people who have built enough wealth and done it in a good way that, you know, just because they have a lot that it's now going to be siphoned off. Like, but that's reality. And so people who want to get ahead of it, there are ways to shield aspects of their wealth from estate taxes and do some gifting beforehand, right, yeah. to, to take advantage of their exemption. So there's a lot of different ways to do it, but you need the experts um, to, to uh design and help you think through how you want to handle it. Yeah, you definitely um, can't. You can't go that one alone. You, you have to, you know, if you have a big estate, you, you better think about it <laughs> earlier <laughs> rather than later. <laughs> yeah. And that's why a lot of them are not like, you know, you flip a switch and they're on, mm-hmm. right? They take some effort, they take some energy and, and you know, mm-hmm. take some to what we talked about earlier in this conversation of planning, right? They're not simple little things. So if you have that sort of situation, you know, certainly get in touch with your advisors. And, you know, as I think about too, and maybe one of the last topics in this, and we touched on a little bit around, you know, our government having massive debt, our, our, our social programs running out of money, potentially, mm-hmm. right? Social Security, Medicare, and what that might mean for us down the road. You know, yes, a lot of people, I mean, I've asked a lot of tax experts, and the only answer I get is tax rates have to go up. I don't know if that's true or not, right? We've had them low for a little while now, historically low, but you never know. And, and it's there might be a time when they sort of start doing this wealth transfer from the wealthy to you know the less wealthy. Um, and this is the way they do it, right? Through Medicare, Social Security costs. And I know there's a lot of ways that uh, they're starting to do that with Medicare premiums and rising and, and healthcare costs rising for everyone. And that's just one way. So it's just for something for us to be aware of. And that's why getting more of our money out of the way and diversified can be uh, um, a huge benefit if things like this change, right? Tax rates and laws around Social Security, Medicare. So Jeremy, any any kind of thoughts around that? Um, I know there's a lot of uncertainty around that, but you know, anything from, from your end, from, a, um, from the accounting side? You know, it, it, the landscape just it screams that taxes are going to increase, but you never know. You never know what they're going to do. There could be some other cure all that, that they come up with, but um, it's probably unlikely, but that's, 
you know, that's why I love working with you know, business owners, and I, I keep bringing this up, but like being in a different tax structure, you can avoid exactly what you're talking about, the Social Security and the Medicare. And you can have more control over where what you do with your retirement savings. Like you can take instead of, you know, having a schedule, you're on a Schedule C, you're paying 15.3% in self-employment taxes alone. That's that's Social Security and Medicare times two. It's a lot of money, especially when, you know, I get folks that come to me and they're making $500,000 net. That's like that's a ton of money. It's like you're leaving on the table there. It's 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 crazy to me. And on top of it, you are not steering where your money goes. That's going to Social Security and Medicare. And what you were just saying is very accurate. There's an issue with it. And something needs to be done about it. I'm not sure what, but though that 15.3% might even go higher. That's one way to solve it. Or you or you, you raise the you know the rates on ordinary income tax. There's a couple of different ways to go about it, but you know, I don't see it's never going to go down. Oh, let me put it that way. Yeah, it's hard to imagine that scenario, uh, even though, you know, a lot of uh, economists would say that, you know, having a much lower tax rate will actually increase tax revenues <laughs> and spur economic development. I don't think there's an appetite for it yet. No. But, yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine tax rates going down. But, you know, this is where you have to kind of get ahead of it. And if it does go up, you know, there's a lot of triggers and in arms that the government can pull, um, and some of them are hidden. Like some of you argue that, you know, the inflation is that hidden tax and it's eroding all the debt, right? These sorts of things. So there's a lot of ways to address the problem, but, you know, just like I know in our government, nothing changes that quickly. No. Because of the, and it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty difficult to um, get rid of $33 trillion worth of debt or whatever the hell we're at right now. Yeah, it, just like, Check the, the debt clock and at a, uh, a time when our economy is, quote unquote, doing well from a job perspective, that we have to run deficits in the trillions is a problem. Yeah. Right. And so these are the types of things that doesn't take a genius to figure out, hey, there's potentially problems here. And one of the avenues is related to triggering different tax uh, rates mm -hmm. and strategies from the government side. So this is where we have to get ahead of it as consumers, business owners, own, uh, owners of our own financial lives, and, and more, most importantly, you know, the C, I kind of call it the, the, the CFO of our family's finances, right? We got treated like a business, and this is one that's aspect really of it, right? And that's kind of how we position it, and um, we have to take ownership of it. So, so for those who are able to hang on and, and listen to this, hopefully you guys got some tremendous nuggets out of it. We scratch the surface. There's so much in there. And a lot of it is, you know, based on your personal situation and, and desires and risk tolerance, all those sorts of things. But that's why you have to go talk to people about it so that we can, you know, you can get the help you needed and then make the best decisions for yourself, your family and your business. So, Jeremy, as always, you've always uh, your open not mindedness around this and willingness to talk about tax. You always say, I love talking about tax. I do because I get to talk to people like you who are actually thinking about it broadly. Uh, not everyone does. So I appreciate your uh, partnership and your time today. And uh, any last parting words on your side? Those two jokes were hilarious in the beginning. <laughs> now, but it's always a pleasure, Tom. Um, I appreciate it. And um, you know, I think it's, it's great to be able to talk about these things with, with someone who understands it, who isn't a CPA. So it's uh it's it's really I, I find our conversations very fruitful i'd say that's good wonderful well thanks again and we'll probably do many of these in the future but uh thanks for joining us on this uh podcast and we'll see you on the next episode thanks awesome so thanks for joining us on this three-part series where we talked about what we learned around this year's tax uh season as as well as what we can do in terms of planning for this year's tax uh, bill and ideas and strategies for the future. Because we know, what we do know is taxes are such a big component of our, our future expenses and, and there is still a, a possibility that tax rates are gonna go up. So the complexities will continue to grow over time. And that's why it's so key to continue learning and really appreciate you joining us and hopefully you did find value. And if any of these things are, uh, are top of mind for you, certainly, 
reach out to your own tax professional if you have one or reach out to uh, Jerry and myself to learn more and see if there's something that we can help you with. So hopefully you got some value. Enjoy it. Share it with your friends and, and others who would benefit. And we'll see you in the next episode of the Perennial Pride Podcast. Mm-hmm.